We do a walkthrough on a Coleman. Start in the back. You are pre-wired for a backup camera. Now this one does not have a backup camera. Just pre-wired for one. It does use power from those marker lights up there. So if you get a camera installed, you need the running lights on your tow vehicle to be on, which turns the camera on. Coming around the side. Bumper caps come off. That's going to be the perfect spot to store your sewer hose. These don't come with a sewer hose. That will have to be a separate purchase. Cable inlet. So if you're going somewhere that provides cable, you can hook up cable to that. Right over here, you got your black and gray tanks. So gray handle obviously is your gray tank. Black handle is your black tank. Always recommend making sure those are all handles all the way closed before you take your cap off. And then I always do black tank first, let that get completely dumped. Once it's completely dumped, I'll do gray tank. That'll flush out your hose. That way when you pick it up to move it in its storage spot in the bumper, it's not dripping in black tank water. Shore cord, 30 amp shore cord, it's built in, you can't lose it. You just pull it out when, you, when you're ready to use it and then you just stuff it back in when you're ready to store it. This flips up, has this little sliding piece here so you can make it look neat like that. And then when you have it all the way in, you can close it so it's not, there's a big gaping hole there. City water inlet, this is where you're gonna hook up your hose to. To run all your uh, water fixtures off of city water pressure, you won't need to use your pump when you're hooked up to city water. Storage right here. Just pass through storage. A lot of good information here. You have your VIN on there if you ever need to reference that. Um, gross vehicle weight rating. So that's 9,680 9, pounds. That's the most this trailer will weigh. That includes the dry weight of the trailer plus cargo carrying capacity plus max occupancy. That's the most this trailer will ever weigh. Um, cargo carrying capacity. So you have, it's in kilograms. So 1,325 kilograms. So you do times 2.2, which gets you how many in pounds. Uh, water does, is included in cargo. Water is counted as cargo. Just... And then down here you have tire size and tire pressure. 65 PSI, that's what they were checked to. Um, definitely recommend checking your tire pressure before every trip. Power tongue jack. With a light. Beats hand cranking every day of the week. Dual 20 pound propane cylinders, freshly filled. Right in here is your automatic changeover regulator. So if you were to have both tanks on, you can see how this is pointing over here. It's going to pull from this tank first if this one were to get emptied. A little diaphragm in there opens up and it will switch to pulling from this tank. However, when it switches, this black thing right here doesn't rotate. It won't move on its own. This is only for you to select what tank it pulls from first. So keep that in mind that you could be halfway through this tank when you're still thinking you're running off of this tank. So just keep that in mind. And then some people think if you put it in the middle, it's going to pull from both tanks equally. Um, unfortunately, that's not how it works. It's just one side or the other. Battery, Group 24 RV Marine Grade battery. Brand new battery. And the, if it's going to be a long time between trips, a couple weeks, I recommend disconnecting the negative lead off of your battery. In the winter, I recommend taking your battery completely out, storing it somewhere a lot warmer than being sat outside. Chains, when you, if you hook up, you cross them to your truck. You have your seven-way here. That's what's going to allow the trailer lights and brakes to work. And you have a breakaway cable tucked in here somewhere. Yep, right here. That's hooked to that box. That'll get hooked up to the truck as well. If for any reason this were to come undone from your tow vehicle, it's going to pull the pin out that box, activate the brakes on the trailer. Pre-wired for solar, so that's part that's wired straight to the battery too. That's for trickle charging your batteries off of the solar panel. You have to buy the, well you don't have to buy it, um, but if you want it to be able to plug into this, you have to buy the Furion branded uh, solar charger. You could also buy a small trickle charger that you can alligator clip right to your battery and just set the solar panel right on top. But it's nice to have this because it's just already wired up for it. Other side of that storage compartment. 
over here with your stabilizing jacks. So you have front ones and back ones, they both work the same. These are meant for stabilizing, not for leveling. And so you see one will go down, it'll get close. And the other one will kind of start going too. There we go. Once that one makes contact with the ground, the other side will speed up. That's it. Like I said, these are stabilizers, not levelers. If you want to level your camper, you're going to use your tongue jack front and back to raise and lower the front to get it level front to back. If you're really worried about side by side, as you're backing it in, you back some back it under some blocks under your tires to get it level side to side, and then you snug these down to the ground. If you try to pick up the weight of the trailer with these, you can bend them, you could break them. If you, if, if you bend these because you're trying to lift up the weight of the trailer, that's an unwarrantable because that's not how they're designed to work. Um, so keep that in mind. No, they're not meant to lift the trailer. Outdoor power, it's GFCI protected. All your GFCIs are on the same circuit. So if you were to trip one, the other ones will trip two as well. Ah. Vent, exterior range hood vent. So if you're using your range hood, you can pop this open so it actually has somewhere to vent out with the fan. If not, just snap it closed. Fresh water fill, that's where you're gonna fill your onboard fresh tank. Just open this, <coughs> press your hose in there. Turn it on, it'll slowly fill up. Definitely recommend draining that after every trip. Your drain for that is right there. This is when you, you need your pump to pull from that tank. Furnace, just keep it clean. See any debris or whatnot, clean it out of there. They do make screens you can put on this. That's going to help keep road debris from getting in there. Help uh, spiders from building nests in there and whatnot. I've seen bees nest in them too. That's going to help prevent all that. Fridge vent, just keep it clean. These little slots right here, and then I always recommend taking the whole thing off and cleaning back there every once in a while too as well. Black tank flush. So you can hook a hose up to this. As you're dumping your black tank, turn the hose on. It'll flush everything out. Only do that when you're dumping your black tank. Otherwise, it's going to fill it. Outdoor shower, it's just hot and cold out here. They're not really good for taking actual showers, but like spraying sand off your feet. If the, the pet got dirty, you can spray them now. It's really good for that. Water heater, all set up for you guys to use it. All you gotta do is hook up water, whether it be from your pump, from your fresh tank, or from your city water. It'll automatically start filling. Once it's full, you can kick it on. All the controls are on the inside and you'll be good to go. I definitely recommend draining it after every trip, just like your fresh water tank. You don't want it sitting half full of water for a couple weeks because that'll start to get stagnant. So, before you pull this plug out to drain it, and by the way, the plug is 15 sixteenths is the socket size. I like to use a socket with an extension. They do make a tool for it. I don't use it because it's like a wrench, and I always end up like hitting my knuckles here. It's a tight spate to work in, so I just use a socket. Before you pull that plug out, open up your pressure relief. Let me see, I got some water in there right now. There you go. Once the water stops squirting out and everything out here is designed to get wet, so that's fine that it gets a little wet. Snap it closed, then you could take that plug out. If you neglect to do this first, all that pressure that you relieved out of here is now going to come out of here and you might get wet. Well, you will get wet. Could lose that plug you go shooting across so always relieve your pressure first and then clean in here clean in there real good um, you can use air compressed air to blow this out just keep in mind whatever you blow in through here is going to come out there so stand to the side when you do it and then more storage back here and the controls for the rear stabilizers Coming onto the inside, 
Well, here you got your monitoring panel, so you can read how check your battery batteries are. Fresh tank, empty, black, and gray one. This does not have a second gray. This does not have a second gray tank, so ignore the top one. They use these panels for all the different ones, so uh, um, some of them have second gray tanks. This one does not. If your controls for your water heater, this one is strictly gas only. Turn it on. If the propane went on, it's going to light the burner on the uh, water heater. The burner will cycle on and off as you, as the water gets hot, as you call for more hot water, it will relight. Turn your water pump on and off, so if you are pulling from your fresh tank. Then you have exterior lights, which do your awning LEDs. Interior lights, which do your main row of interior lights. So you can see that not all of them get turned off with this switch. Controls for your slide out, in and out. And then your awning, you can extend and retract. Your awning does not stop automatically when it reaches its outward position. That's something you'll have to let off the switch. And it isn't a one push, push switch, you have to push and hold. Now, usually when you see that flap, we'll get it the right direction. There you go. When you see that flap, the bare metal tube, and then that white sticker, you're all the way open. If you were to hold, extend, and still hold it, the, the awning will roll back in. It'll just roll the fabric the wrong way around the tube. They are adjustable. See, both arms, it'll say pull down to adjust pitch. Grab here, you can pull it down. So if it's raining, you can have water run off to the corner rather than all the way along the edge. If it is storming real bad, will you awning in? There's no sensors that'll do it for you. That's something you'll have to do on your own. Um, if you rolled in wet because you had you had to because of doing a storm, as soon as you get the chance to, as soon as it gets sunny and dry out again, roll it back out, let it dry off. Because you don't want it retaining moisture for a long period of time because it'll start to smell, you'll get it'll get moldy and mildewy. So just keep that in mind. Bedroom. All the lights in the bedroom you just turn on by clicking the light itself. And here you have a spot to mount a TV with a cable outlet and a regular outlet, and then dual outlets and USB ports on either side of the bed. And you should also have some storage underneath there. So that long skinny crank is a manual backup for your stabilizer jacks on the driver's side of the unit. There is a spot to put those. The small silver one is a manual backup for your tongue jack. There's a cap on the top you can undo and the spot to put that jack crank in. Radio. Radio is also a DVD player. It's a standard, standard definition DVD player. Um, you have power here. Here are different zones. Zone 1 is inside. If I turn it off, you can see it go away. Now it's just the outside speakers playing. Zone 2 is outside, so I can turn it off so no speakers are on. Back to zone 1 on. So you can have one on, or one off, or both on, or both off. 1 through 6 right here. Presets, push and hold. Pause, play all your controls, skipping channels and whatnot. Bluetooth button, so you can Bluetooth your phone to this. And then mode selection here. No link because you have a Bluetooth AV in, which would be playing audio. Auxiliary, so there's an auxiliary port. And then back to your radio. There's headphone jacks and USB as well. USB doesn't interface with this, it's just for charging your phone. Very easy. Like I said, it is a DVD player. You'll pop a DVD in there. If you have a TV installed in here, turn it to the right channel. Um, the AV or composite channel, and you'll be able to watch a DVD. Light switch here. It turns on and off with decorative LEDs and the outlet for your TV. Coax. So one of them is labeled antenna power. That's this one. That's your booster for your antenna. That's the one you're going to turn. If you're using your ca a cable, turn it off. If you're using your antenna, turn it on. There's a built-in antenna. There's no crank or anything you have to worry about. It's just fixed on the roof. The other one is labeled uh, Wi-Fi power. This is pre-wired for the Wi-Fi. Um, it doesn't have the Wi-Fi, so it's something that's pre-wired for. 
Coming down here, you have your breaker box. So all your breakers for your 120 volt appliances, all your fuses for your 12 volt appliances. Definitely recommend carrying some spares. You have some 15s and 240s. That's just in case. But over here, it's a carbon monoxide and propane gas alarm. That is hardwired to the 12 volt system. So there's no batteries you have to worry about changing. However, it will give you the low voltage chirps, just like your smoke alarms and whatnot do at home. If the battery up front by the by the tongue will just start dying. So keep that in mind. That's a good indicator that that battery up there is dying. That's why I recommend in storage disconnecting the negative lead so that's not drawing a lot of power. Then up here is a smoke detector that just uses 9 volt batteries. That starts giving you those low voltage chirps, putting your 9 volt in it. Microwave. Uh, this camper is not plugged in right now. Uh, it is being hogged by someone else. Um, microwave works just like your standard microwave. Like I said, you've got to be plugged in for it to work. Light and fan. Remember, if you are using this fan, make sure that flap on the outside is open. I have two more GFCI outlets here and a USB port. Oven has a light right here. It turns off your turns on the knobs and as well as the oven light. Flip up and back for your glass stove top. Turn that to flame, to your sparker, they light right up. All three burners work that way. Your uh, oven works a little bit differently. You turn that to the front flame, push and hold this in. As it's as you're pushing and holding this in, you're gonna twist your sparker, this one right here. And what you're looking for is that, that pilot in there to get lit. Once the pilot is lit and you're confident that when you let go of this, it's going to stay lit, then you can turn it to your desired temperature. If you turn it off and you turn it to the flame, it shuts the burners off, leaves the pilot on. That way you don't have to relight it. Always recommend turning it off before you go to bed or before you leave the trailer, this new campsite unattended for an extended period of time. Fridge is super simple. Push and hold to turn it on. It's only mode, put, then push and hold to turn it off. It's only mode is auto. So it's automatically the default to 110. If it doesn't have it, it's going to automatically switch to running off of propane for you, provided your gas to be on. Now, sometimes if you know you're going somewhere where you're going to have to, you couldn't be plugged in, so you have to use propane for your fridge. If you turn it on and it's the first appliance you turn on after turning the propane on, odds are it's not going to light right away. Try to get one of your burners on your stove to light to draw the gas up to it because it's right next to the fridge. Now, whether you're running on gas or electric, a fridge like this is going to take anywhere from 8 to 10 hours to get to operating temperature. So I always recommend trying to plan your, your trip accordingly with that. Thermostat, very simple. The first thing it'll ask is what mode you want, auto, high, or low. I recommend auto. Auto is going to let your AC cycle on and off at your set temperature. So if you had it set to 65, once it hits 65, it'll shut off. Um, the compressor will, usually the fan on the AC continues to run, um, and the compressor will kick back on as it's starting to get warmer in here, and it'll cycle on and off to help regulate that. If you're just running it on high or low, you can set it to 60, but once it hits 60, it's not shutting off. It'll continue to run, and what that might cause is it to freeze up. Then you have to wait for it to thaw before you can turn it back on again. Once you selected your mode, tap it again, you're on cool, cool goes to 55, tap it again, you're on furnace, your furnace goes to 90. These can be a little finicky. <coughs> if you ever hit up and down accidentally at the same time, they does switch to Celsius. Just hit it back to go back. <coughs> Excuse me. Cycle back and then it turns it off. Couch here turns into a bed. You can just unvelcro these. Take these out. Lift this up down here. And pull out towards you. And have a nice bed. You could also grab this panel right down here. Get access to the storage underneath there. And then this does have cup holders right there. Over here it turns into a bed as well. Let's lift the table up, pop them legs out, set the table on these little shelves right here. Then you play puzzle with your cushions to fill in the gap. Light switch over here does decorative LEDs underneath that table. And then all the lights in the side out, you turn on and off at the light. 
Bathroom. Very self-explanatory. Uh, outlet. This is your main GCI, so if any of the GCIs would have trip, this is the one you hit reset on. Light switch for in here as well. Do you have a fan? Let's crank to crank up the lid. Always recommend having that lid open with a fan running when you take a shower in here. You can take baths in this. If you wanted to shower, you turn it on, pull this up, and then it'll divert off your shower head. Very simple in here. Then not a whole like a heck of a lot in the bedroom. Again, lights you turn on and off at the light itself. USB ports over there. These you can turn rearrange to turn into a bed in here. Another coax outlet, another regular outlet for another TV in here. Plenty of storage in there, and then you should have access to that exterior storage from here too. Top bunks have a 300 pound limit on them. Yeah, not a whole heck of a lot back here, but does sleep a whole heck of a ton. And then, that's one more thing. I want to make sure you folks know where they are and what they are and how to get to them. Is your bag. I'm going to set this, this camera down real quick. a pile of stuff that was in the bag you have extra components stuff that came with the radio that the manufacturers just threw in with the bag something like this too they give you a toilet paper roll holder all kinds of manuals anything that was installed in here there's a manual for like here's a the the that owner's manual very broad it covers all of Dutchman's products but it wouldn't hurt to just kind of gloss through it like I said toilet paper roll holder there and then a remote for your radio in here we will actually unbag this remote and I will put it in there so you know where it is all right well that concludes the video walkthrough of your uh, Coleman I hope you guys enjoy using the trailer a lot I hope you guys found the video informative and goodbye